Today we've got staircase locks, we've got inclined planes, just an absolute marvel of abandoned engineering. Today we're at the Foxton Locks. This is a flight of 10 locks and they're in two stages. So you've got two lots of five and five and they're staircase locks. So what you've got is you can see the lock above me there going directly into the next lock there. There's no pound in the middle. They have these side pounds, but these are a slightly different thing. This is an area absolutely brimming with canal history. You've got not only these locks, but you've got an incredible incline plane just over the side over there, which we'll visit in a second. Now these were, built and as time went on and the railways came there was a lot more competition and the Grand Junction Canal which is the Grand Union Canal was formed and various things happened to try and widen the canal to be able to compete with the railways. They widened in different areas and other sections were already wide and they got to here and these locks here took about an hour to get up. They were quite time consuming, so you only really got about 50, 60 boats a day going through this magnificent flight. They were also narrow locks as well, so you couldn't get the wide beams that they really needed to run to compete with the, with, with the railways. Now they had problems here and at Watford further down. So they devised a plan, and the plan was to build an inclined plane. Slightly different to the other ones, it was not an inclined plane where you were taking goods up in carts or small tugboats. It were, they were massive troughs that you, kind of caissons that you sat in and they took you up. Now the problem is with a flight of locks that takes an hour to get up, you're going to get backlogs, especially on a canal like this, which even during the railway era was still very popular and very busy. Now they had to devise a solution, there was, there was no way around it. They widened the locks in a lot of places and along the Grand Union you often see kind of like a, looks like a small side pound alongside a, a lock and what that was, that's the old lock with the sort of double lock in the uh, middle of it, the wide lock in the middle. So they had this idea and it was a boat lift and they were going to do the same at Watford but the problem is the, the boat lift came in about 1900. These locks have been built in 1810 so they'd, they'd served 90 years and the problem was it just wasn't profitable. It just didn't have the effect they thought it was going to have. So they never built the ones in Watford. And these then became redundant because you still couldn't get the wide boat all the way through into London, which is what they were hoping to do with the lift. So they only lasted 11 years before they closed down, which is unfortunate. And they are now a ruin. They are a scheduled monument. So let's walk over that way and see what we can see. As we make our way across, you'll see these side pounds. And these side pounds are very, very small. They're nowhere near as big as the top ones, which we'll see as we work our way up the video. And there was good reason for this, because when they built this inclined plane, which is just up there, they had to make these smaller to be able to fit the inclined plane in. So when they dug this all out, this was a new section of canal, and they took all the soil from here, which they pulled out as they were doing it, and they took it to the top to an embankment, and that allowed a separate access in off of the main canal behind us to reach the inclined plane, which is just here. So what you see is come up this channel and into here, and you can see this is like a, a trough and it's split into two just there. And then you would end up into a caisson and onto the one in four gradient, which is the inclined plane, going up through there. Now, unfortunately, this is all gated off, so I can't actually go, would have been some cracking views from over there, but let's uh, start working our way up when there's quite a bit more history involved in this, which they've got on display here. Just before we climb up, this is a good plan of it. So you can see this is the main canal through here and up through that way. So that was a bit built in 1810. This section was then dug out in about 1898. And you can see they've had to sort of straighten out what is the incline there. The boats would have come into, into there. Look, that would have took a wide beam or two narrow boats and up into a chamber there, which is where all the soil that was dug out from lower down was used to build the embankment at the top. And then looking at the pounds from the top as you come down the first flight of five, which is there, you go into a much, much smaller, narrower set of pounds down here. And these pounds would have originally have gone across here, I assume and they lost those when they dug all of this out. And to the side here, they've got a couple of the old icebreakers. Now these were wooden 
as most icebreakers were, but then they plated them in steel and it made them a lot tougher. And you've got two here, you've got Gordon Thomas and the Thomas Holt. Now the Thomas Holt was named after an engineer in the area and it's much narrower and made it much easier to break through the ice. But they used to have these and they'd have the horses kind of bolted onto here, which they would have a dozen of them at times and they would have 15 men on board. 14 men would purely be rocking the boat and as they rocked the boat it broke the ice much better and then there was a guy in the back who was kind of like the manager he would blow his whistle every 15 minutes and they would change the horses no chance of that for the men doing the work but the horses got a rest at least these boats were effective for ice under six inches thick after that you kind of had some problems you couldn't break the ice now the canals in 1962 to 1963 froze over and it was a terribly cold winter and they never really recovered after that because the ice was so thick they couldn't break through so a lot of the canals couldn't trade and a lot more of the, the goods went onto the railways and they lost their trade and then halfway up the inclined plane just here look and what you can see on here is where there's rails and there's two sets of rails so there would have been carriages and those carriages would have carried a caisson on top which would have dropped in and out of the water below. And they would have been on rails and then you would have ran up from the bottom to the top from there look and you can see those little kind of basins or pounds at the bottom there. And as we round that corner we enter the second flight of five staircase locks. They're very tightly packed as you can see. Obviously you don't need the second set of gates so you go through one set of gates into the lock up and then in through straight into the, the uh, second lock. So there's no real sort of uh, loss of water between them, but these side pounds are needed to keep a water supply kind of going as, as you go through. It's quite nice to kind of see all of this. It's been well preserved and well managed by the CRT. Thank you to CRT for managing this network. And uh, despite criticism from some corners, you're doing a great job on a very small budget. So. Let's try and support that. Now in the description, there'll be some links to some campaigns which are trying to basically fund Britain's waterways are one, and that's kind of what it's doing. They've had massive cuts to CRT and they're struggling with the sort of finances they've got already. So really need more money coming into the network. This is a petition to try and improve that situation. So what happened here when the incline plane opened is they, I don't know if they closed the locks during the day, and they were only open at night, but they, they, they were definitely used a lot less. And there was a company who were bringing boats through that worked 24 hours a day. They used to work in teams of four on the boats. Two would sleep, two would work. So they had to keep this going all the time, which probably saved them, because there's a good chance if that hadn't have happened, they'd have kept the inclined plane going because they could carry the bigger boats and close these down back in 1900. So the night sort of boats actually saved probably this flight of locks from being lost which is fantastic news because they are beautiful. There was also the water issue here so these locks took 25,000 gallons of water to take a boat from the top which is just here in front of me right back down to the bottom all the way down there and the boat lift cured this problem because they didn't need that insane amount of water they only needed enough to fill basically the casing up, the trough up. So it was a much more water effective way, which as you all know, is important on a canal because it's such a precious resource. And one that even to this day now, we're fighting for on so many canals. As you can see on here, there's water streaming into that side pound. Now that's the top of all the side pounds. So that water will now work its way down through an overflow just over there. And it will cascade down through all of these, allowing these locks to be filled up and kind of conserving water. Now what they do have here are these. Now you'll notice, unlike a lot of other canal locks, these are actually red rather than white, much like the ones just further down over there. Now these ones are actually for taking water from the lock into the side pound rather than going down through the sluices into the next lock. This saved really from sort of displacement of boats and extra water put through that was unnecessary and, and all sorts so it saved it saved water over time here's the little overflow here look which isn't running at the moment you can see that would just overflow down through that channel there so that water now is going in, into this chamber it isn't being wasted 
it's being stored ready to go. And just up here, we have the other leg of the canal, which was the one built at the top in 1898. So this section of canal was restored along with the incline plane down there with that lottery money. And what they have here is a set of gates. Now these aren't lock gates, they are stop gates. So the idea of them is, if there's suddenly a, a breach just down there, these gates will pull shut with the flow of water, will shut them off, and they will seal then and stop the canal from draining. And they're a great idea, and you see them dotted about the canal in various places. So this now goes to the top of the incline, which we'll jump over to now. Do you enjoy my content? I hope you do. Now, I have a huge amount of people that watch my videos that are not subscribed, and I would love to get that figure higher because it helps me reach you when I bring new videos out. So please click that subscribe button now and like if you can as well. And here we are at the top of the incline, and you can see just down here there's a boat, and it's kind of showing you here again that there's kind of two sides to this. So you would have gone through into here into kind of the casings that would have been at the top and gone down and you would have had one going one way one going the other and it's it's pretty cool to see you can still see some of the old sort of uh, blocks that were, would have held the canal together basically would have held everything up and the engine house sits just behind over there now if you look up from here you can really see kind of how the rails would have sat in now the third one along just over there there is a rail still existing on there so the rails would have sat kind of on the top of those concrete sort of tubes and the engine house is just over there you can just and just see the top of the red below the sort of hillside there that had a 25 horsepower steam engine in and it turned you on to pull you up the hill. Unlike a lot of incline planes, this wasn't gravity, it was done by that engine house. So it was a little bit more reliable, but it had its own issues. And the problem is, when the tank hit the bottom down there, it made it lighter in weight because it was immersed in the water and that upset the balance of the tanks. So they had to compensate for this. So when the tanks got to the top of the incline, they had to make them into a slightly different angle which you can see as it comes up this hill. And that made the tanks a lot easier to sort of move up and down, compensating for that issue at the bottom. And because the boats were kept at an angle and you had to kind of have, so the, the wheels were like that with a flat boat on top. So you can imagine the back wheels were much, much longer than the front wheels. And that is why if you look down in here, you can see those rails go down into like a, to much deeper trough in the middle. And that's where those back wheels would have gone into. So you didn't come up and over here and just sort of tip the boat over the side, which is what would have happened. So I was actually a little bit wrong. Those locks did close down. I had read that they had, and I saw stuff saying they were still used at night. And what happened was steam powered boats came along. So it was before like the modern diesel engine. Boats are still being pulled by horses, so you brought your horse up to the top of here and took it on. Now, they didn't operate these at night, uh, I assume because of the noise and, and because they couldn't see what they were doing. So they actually restored the locks in 1909 to be able to be carried on for night use. So it was actually steam engines that saved the canal locks. But they also had issues with, with this. and. It was quite stressful on the sort of components that were used here and the bolts were pulling out the sleepers and uh, nothing they could they'd try could kind of overcome that issue. So it was mothballed in 1911. It's a shame really. Can you imagine this still being here? What a tourist attraction this would be. I don't think they'll ever restore it. It's a, uh, it's a monument now, so it would be quite hard to do. I've wanted to visit here for a long time. This is my first ever visit. So I'm, I'm like a kid in a sweet shop at the moment. It's, it's really cool. There's so much stuff here that just uh, kind of flicks my my history switch and just yeah brings the place alive. And uh, it's also a cracking view from up here. So it's well worth a visit. Like I said, there's a canal centre that's open. There's a pub down the bottom, which is meant to be excellent. I'm here too early to sort of go near that. But uh, please visit and uh, give your support. There's plenty of ways that you can raise money for CRT by visiting these things and visiting the museum and stuff like that as well. So it's another little way to help the waterways stay in a decent condition. Have a great day.